YouTube, welcome to another video, uh, great to see you again. In this one we'll be going over motion tracking your stock footage and uh, uh, making sure your 3D objects look great inside of your scene here. Uh, we'll be brushing lightly over compositing, uh, but mainly focusing on tracking the footage and getting it to look right. Uh, I hope you learned something, if you do then please leave a like, subscribe and click on the bell icon for further notifications on future videos that I make. Also, if you decide to make this yourself, then please share with me on Instagram. It's uh, very cool to see. And I would like to point out that these project files are available on Gumroad for just $2 uh, if you want to support the channel and me. Um, now, let's get started. Once again, we are back in a fresh Blender scene. And first of all, we want to go ahead and delete everything. So hit A, X and choose OK. Now, let's op open up our motion tracking uh, window here. So go uh, plus VFX and choose motion tracking. Let's clean up our workspace a bit. Now, let's open up our footage. Uh, I put a link in the description down below uh, and the footage is available on pexels.com for free. And I've got it over here. I'm just gonna largen this window here. Now let's hit set scene frame. So the length of the animation will be the length of our clip here. And I'm gonna start it at 2.30 and that's because in the frames before that there's people uh, inside of the frame and I don't want that so I'm gonna start at 2.30 and end at 5.49 now let's hit prefetch this will load in the first 250 frames making it more responsive for us that's uh, easy when working with tracking and let's go in our render properties here and make sure that the uh, look transform is set to standard um, and maybe change the look type to medium high contrast yeah that will do nicely. Let's turn on ambient occlusion as well. Bloom, screen space reflections. Let's crank up our samples. Of course, I don't want 1282, but 128 here. And let's set up our tracking. So enable normalize and choose the match type for previous frame. And let's hit detect features. Now this will detect all the points Blender sees as usable. So let's just track this forward uh, and let's go through our entire footage. I've sped it up for you guys. All right, all done. And as you can see at the end, we're not having too much tracking data and uh, that's because most of them failed to make it all the way through. So I'm gonna go to somewhere around 370, hit detect features again, and make sure I uh, track these forward again. nicely now as you can tell all of these um, are done but some of them have gone completely rogue so all the way off the charts and they are not useful to getting a good soft so let's go into the soft tab into the clean up tab here let's change the type to delete track here let's go for something like 150 frames so that means every keyframe that didn't make it more than 150 frames uh, gets deleted so that takes care of most of the um, extreme keyframes and now I want to clean up the rest of them manually so I'm going to select a few of these uh, which still go out of the center here and I'm going to delete them manually one by one just looking for the ones which go off the most all right done now before we can actually solve our footage we need to set a keyframe a and b that's within the frame range of our footage uh, else it won't work so i'm going to go for 230 on keyframe a and 300 for keyframe b and let's hit solve all right so this gave us a uh, projection error of 1.86 um, and the blue line will tell you the average projection error and where it is and as you can tell at the back it's the worst so i'm going to go ahead and delete a few more tracks in the back there Make sure to select all your trackers again when you resolve. And now I'm at 0.5. And I kind of want to clean this up a bit more. Uh, get it a bit lower. Uh, but as you can tell, the blue line is starting to get pretty horizontal. And that's what we want. So I'm just going to delete a few more here. And solve it a couple more times. All right, so that's a 0.44 now already a bit better let's delete a few more and 
do it one more time. A 0 0.41. All right. Uh, I think that'll do nicely. Just once more, 0.4. Okay. So I'll keep it at a 0.4. Now, and as you can tell, the blue line is uh, going almost horizontally. So that means we don't have too many um, issues with our track here. And it's looking pretty solid. So um, that's that for now. Now next up, let's open up a window here and go into the 3D viewport and let's hit setup tracking scene. This will um, give us a camera, a trackable object and a floor, uh, as well as some lights. Of course, we don't need the plane there and we also don't need the lights and the um, additional group there. Now make sure you go into film and enable transparency. You can actually see your footage in the back there. And let's delete the light and the collection there. Now uh, let's go into our camera tab here by selecting our camera, go uh, into background images and make sure the opacity is set to one so you can see it in full color. Now we want to work on our orientation and to do so we are going to select three uh, trackers and then hit floor until we get a result that we like. As you can tell this can be a bit fidgety so uh, I've tried a couple of times eventually settling on this one which is uh, sort of lining up with my footage. So yeah, I'm happy uh, enough uh, with this result for now. Now I'm gonna select one of the uh, trackers here, which is sort of in the center of where I want the artifact to be. And I'm gonna hit set origin there. This will um, move the origin to that certain tracker there. And now uh, it is uh, on the right position, but you can tell the scale is all wrong because this cube is looking way too big, especially considering it should be small all the way in the distance. So I'm gonna look for two tracking uh, points here on which I can approximate the distance. And I've got these two here. And I feel like the distance between those should be about 20 meters. So I wanna go to the skill part of the um, orientation tab there and type in 20 for the distance and then hit set skill. Now this decreased the size of our cube by quite a lot. And it's looking kind of good. I think this uh, fits the scene, so I'm going to leave it at 20. Now let's go into layout here and start working on uh, some of the modeling parts, which shouldn't be too hard though. First of all, I'm going to change the passport 2 of our camera in viewport display here, so uh, don't get disturbed by uh, anything on the outside of our camera. And I want to add in a uh, UV sphere, so shift A and then choose UV sphere. Now it's really small, so I'm just going to scale it up a bit. This will be our planet, so it can be quite big. It doesn't really matter for now. Let's add in a subdivision surface and crank up the uh, levels there. And right-click it to shade smooth. All right, so let's go into shading now. now let's clean up our workspace again. And I'm going to delete the cube and make sure the uh, sphere is actually in my camera there. I'm going to go into rendered view so I can actually see the footage in the back there. And I'm going to add in a uh, environment texture. So let's go to the world settings and add in the environment texture there. And now let's open up the world in the uh, node editor there. And I'm going to add in the footage as an HDRI. So this is a bit of cheating. It's not an actual HDRI. But I want the colors from the footage and I don't have an HDRI to fit it. So uh, this will have to do. Now, if you turn off transparent, you can actually see the footage in the back. And I'm just going to tweak the scale until I get a result that sort of fits it. And I'm going to rotate it on the Z axis. And I'm happy with this result. So uh, I tweaked some of the scale settings until uh, it looked somewhere close to what I wanted. Now, let's work on the material for our planet. In this case, I have a texture from a, a cool website. I'll put the link in the description down below, and it's free as well. And they call this a certain fictional planet era, so I'm going to call the material that as well. Now let's add in our image texture. And plug it into the base color. Hit Control T. Uh, if this does not work for you, make sure to go into Preferences and enable the Note Wrangler add-on. And let's open up our image here. I have it over here. And this is our planet texture. It's pretty cool. Just gonna move it up a bit. 
And I'm going to turn on transparent in film again so I can actually see the footage in the back. Now I want to rotate the planet until I get an angle that I like for this scene. I like the craters over there, so I want those in. Hit RR to rotate it easily manually. And that's looking pretty cool. Now let's add in a bump node. So Shift A and look up bump and plug it into the normal. And I want to add in a color ramp as well. Nope, not in there, but in between the bump and the image texture. And I'm going to use the image texture and convert it to black and white with the color ramp and then plug it into the bump to use it as a uh, height map. Still a bit of cheating again, but uh, who cares? It looks good anyway. I'm going to decrease the strength to something like a 0.5. Now I want to add in one more color ramp to do the roughness. I'll plug in the image texture there as well and then plug it into the roughness. And I'm going to change some of the values in here. Pull in the white and the black and change it to a B spline here. And this will give us more of a uh, icy look with some gloss in there. So uh, I kind of like that. Now we need some of the atmospheric glow that you usually see around a planet. And it's uh, pretty easy uh, to do this. We're going to add in a uh, mix shader first. And add in a color ramp. And a Fresnel node. Plug in the Fresnel to the color ramp and the color ramp into the uh, other mix shader. This will add some of the atmospheric glow. You can pull the values on the uh, color ramp in and tweak them until you get a result that you like. All right, so now that's the uh, texturing mostly done. Just one quick thing. I'm going to add in a huge saturation node on the base color there and uh, crank up the saturation to a 2 and the value to 1.2, making it a bit more lighter. Now back into layout, I want to start moving the planet backwards with uh, G and then Y and or X, uh, moving it backwards and G and Z to move it up. As you can see, it's actually disappearing from a camera. So let's go into our camera settings and change the um, view clipping distance to something like 50,000 meters. Just give it a big number. It doesn't really matter as long as it's uh, really big. Let's scale up our planet. Move it back again. GX, GZ. Just tweaking until I get a look that I like. Rotating it some more as well. And I'm actually pretty happy with how it's looking right now. And I'm just going to increase the value there. Now let's add in our artifact object. And to do that, I'm going to hit Shift A and choose another UV sphere. Let's scale it up a bit as well. Just not too much in this case. And let's scale it along the Z axis only this time. So S, Z. Make it uh, elongated like this. Add in a subdivision surface here as well. Crank up the levels. Shade smooth it. And let's scale it uh, without the Z, so S, Shift, Z. So we get a look that uh, that suits us. And in this case, I'm pretty happy uh, with it like this. Let's add in our material. It's going to be super simple. Let's call it Artifact. And let's crank up the metallic to 1. The roughness can go down to a 0 0.1 because we want to see the reflection of the footage. Let's increase the base color, make it a bit darker. Now let's add in a bump node here as well. Plug it into the normal. Add in a uh, noise texture. Duplicate it. Plug them into each other and add in a color ramp. Plug the noise texture into the color ramp and the color ramp into the height there. Let's hit Control T on the noise texture on the left. And let it update. Now. I'm just going to tweak some of these settings until I get a result that I'm happy with. Uh, you can, of course, adjust this to your own liking. Uh, it's just going to be a bit of trial and error here. I don't know what I'm looking for exactly just yet. So let's see. I kind of like this. Tweak some of the detail and roughness settings and the skill settings. This is looking, starting to look pretty good. Um, Maybe increase the black so the reflective a bit more. Yeah, that's looking pretty nice. I'm just going to 
uh, increase the scale to two here, giving a bit more variation. Now, all we want to do is open up a timeline window here and animate the um, mapping values for the rotation. So on the first keyframe, hover over the rotation, hit I. Now let's go to the last keyframe and change the Z rotation to something like 70 and hit I again. Now, uh, I don't think the Z rotation is enough, um, but let's see how it looks. Yeah, I think it needs a bit more. So I'm going to do some on the Y as well. So let's go back to our first keyframe here. And I forgot to add in that if you want your uh, rotation uh, to be constant, make sure to select your mapping node and select all of the keyframes uh, that pop up in the timeline. Hit T and then choose linear interpolation or else your uh, movement will uh, speed up and then slow down. Now, just adding in some Y rotation there as well to finish off the rotation. And finally, let's, let's go into compositing here. Uh, first of all, let's render out a frame so we can uh, actually have something to work with. We can delete these top two nodes there and just plug these into each other there on the alpha over node. Now with V and Alt V, you can zoom in or out. That's uh, important to note because it's not that easy to uh, understand. I'm going to add in a gamma node in between the uh, bottom layer of the alpha over, which is just the planet and the artifact. And I'm going to set it to maybe 0.7. No, I think I'm going to take it up to 0.8. So slightly lighter than it was. Now let's add in a lens distortion node at the back there. Plug it into the viewer and into the uh, render there. And shift, right click and drag over the lines to combine them. And I'm going to add in a dispersion of a 0.01. So very tiny, but still noticeable. Now let's add in a RGB curves node here. And let's go for uh, a reversed S shape to make it a bit lighter still and increase the contrast. And at the end, let's add in another one with an actual S shape to increase the contrast overall. Now back into uh, shading because I still think the uh, planet is a bit too light and I want to increase the uh, HDRI or so to speak to a value of three and maybe rotate it so it better fits our planet. And I'm actually really happy with how it looks now. So let's go into uh, our render properties. Make sure everything is set up correct. 128 for the render samples. Ambient occlusion turned on. Bloom turned on. Screen space reflections turned on. Film set to transparent because we want the footage in the back to be uh, visible. And in color management, make sure it's set to standard and the look can go to something like medium high contrast. Now for the output properties, I've set it to full HD. The frame length of the animation is 230 to 549, which is what we set in the beginning. The FPS will be 30. Let's choose the output type file format of FFmpeg video. Change the quality to perceptually lossless and the container to MP4. Choose a safe location uh, to your liking. And that should be all. And we are uh, finally uh, done to render this out. Okay, so that brings us to the end result again. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. And if you did, then please leave a like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Also, if you decide to make this yourself, then please share with me on Instagram. It's great to see. Uh, and uh, lastly, I want to mention that these project files are available on my Gumroad for just $2. Uh, and you help support the channel that way. That's all for this video and I hope to see you in the next one.